Hey guys, John Morris here, the CEO at johnmorrisonline.com. And you know, one of the things I really used to struggle with was knowing what I was supposed to be doing as a coder, or where I was supposed to be going. Uh, my big problem was when I first started out, I was so focused on the technical part that once I got that figured out, I really didn't know what to do at that point. And it was becoming a real problem for me because I was having trouble building a real business because I didn't know what steps to take next. And my family was actually starting to suffer because of it. And it had got to the point where my wife had told me that I really needed to get this figured out or it was time for me to move on. And the last thing in the world that I wanted was to go back to a regular job, do something I despise doing. So in a, a fit of dis desperation, uh, I started looking everywhere for answers. And what I came across or what I discovered is what I call the five stages of coding career development. And once I learned these five stages and once I knew where I was and what I was supposed to be doing in order to get to the next stage, suddenly my coding career took off. I started getting more clients than I knew what to do with. I started down, turning down more work than uh, I accepted. I started making uh, double, almost triple the money that I was making before. Uh, and everything that I had dreamed of and when I first started coding started uh, to come true for me. And so what I want to do now is I want to share that information with you because I think it'll be very, very helpful for you and hopefully make some things clear for you. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. So be sure to stay tuned. All right. So what are these five stages of coding career development? Well, let's go through them. The first one is what I call discovering your passion. And this is the step that most people skip. Uh, I skipped it and I see most coders around me skipping the step. What most people do is go to the second stage and dive into learning the skills and, and, and doing all the technical stuff. But before you do that, I highly recommend that you take some time uh, to step back and look at and ask yourself the question, why am I doing this? Why do I wanna code? Now, when I did that, what came up for me was that I just loved building things. I had always loved building things since the time I was really little. In fact, I remember like seventh or eighth grade, I had this brilliant idea how I was gonna come up with this new board game and it was gonna make me rich and famous and all this stuff. But uh, it, was, it was really just about figuring out something new and building something new. And I've just always had uh, a joy for that and a passion for that. And so once I took a step back, and, and understood why I was doing what I was doing, it helped in a number of ways. One, it helped me uh, to understand the, the, the things that I should pursue and the things that I shouldn't pursue, which is a huge thing. Uh, it also helped me on those days when I was really struggling, wasn't feeling motivated, was maybe on a project that I, I was no longer inspired with, or I was just tired, whatever the case may be. I could go back and remind myself why I was here, why I was doing this, uh, and it helped me get through those moments. And so for you, what you wanna do is you just wanna ask yourself, why am I doing this? What is it that motivates me and inspires me to learn how to code? You know, for my little brother, uh, it was he wanted to help other artists to build their platform and get through all the technical stuff to get their art and their message out to the world. And that's what inspired him and, and led him through all of the struggles. And now he's an application developer uh, at IBM, you know, uh, other people I've seen, it's it's money and, and, and it can be that simple because when you say money, what you really mean is being able to take care of my family, being able to have freedom to go where I wanna go. And those things are all very valuable. So it's important for you to take a step back first and understand what your passion is, what your, what the reason why you got into coding in the first place. So that's step number one. All right, stage number two is the one that we're all probably pretty familiar with, and that's called mastering your craft. This is about learning everything that you need to learn to be able to follow through on your passion and, and, and your vision. And this is where most people start. And the problem when you don't discover your passion first and you just jump right into mastering your craft is that you start doing all sorts of things that really aren't things you enjoy, aren't related uh, to what it is that you're ultimately gonna end up doing or wanna end up doing. Um, and it really slows you down and bogs you down. And so when you discover your passion first, mastering your craft becomes a lot easier because you can really hone in on the things that you should be learning for what it is that you ultimately want to do. Once you've done that, then really mastering the craft, there's no trick, 
There's no gimmick. It's really about just doing the work. You know, uh, Will Smith has a really great quote. He said that talent is something that's given to you. Skill is something that's earned, and it's earned by what he calls beating on your craft, which means uh, just working on your craft over and over and over again until you become the best in the world. And the focus for this particular stage should be that. You should have the mindset that what your passion is and what it is that you're you're going to do, uh, you should have the, the, the vision that you're going to be the best in the world at it. Now, will you ever be that? Maybe, maybe not, but that should be your focus and that should be what drives you because if you do, you're going to be really, really, really good at it to the point the people that you're doing it for are going to be ecstatic about what you, you deliver to them. All right, stage number three is about finding your voice. And this is really, for me, this is where I was struggling the most. This is kind of where I was stuck because I'd gone through the mastering the craft thing and I was like, okay, what's next? What do I do now? Well, as you go through that process, what happens is you start to uh, develop a point of view and a perspective and you move from, you know, from being an amateur into being what I call an artist, which is someone who cares so deeply about what they do uh, that they're willing to, to fight for it. They're, they're willing to uh, work for it. They're willing to quote unquote die for it uh, because it's it's so a part of who they are and they care about it so much. And so finding your bo- voice is about finding your perspective and understanding what your message to the world is. And the reason that that this, you need to do this is in the, and this is the next step is because this is how you begin to start to attract the ideal customers to you. By putting a message out there that that represents your perspective and it resonates with those people and it causes them to be naturally attracted to you and to come to you as the one to build their thing whenever they decide to do that. Okay, so finding your voice uh, is about uh, honing in on what your message is and what your perspective is. And you do this by, uh, you know, and, and for a lot of coders, it can be a little bit difficult, but you do this by putting your voice out there. You know, for me, it was starting a blog, doing these videos, doing a podcast, just putting information out there. And along the way I learned, I started out with really technical type stuff. And along the way I learned, you know, I'm, I'm a little more interested in maybe the branding, marketing side and the kind of motivational, inspirational side. Those things are, are the part that really speak to me. Obviously I still do the technical stuff, but I like to, to mix in those other things as a part of, of a whole package. And that's my perspective. That's what I can offer. And so for you, you just have to, to figure that out and start putting your message out there uh, because that's going to attract the people to you that, that, that are going to get the most value from you. All right, stage number four. Stage number four is building your platform. Now, this is all about uh, getting your voice heard. You know, the third step, we're finding our voice. The, the fourth step, we're getting it heard on a massive scale. And so, you know, this is about, this can be about all kinds of things, your blog, YouTube, a podcast, you know, maybe it's other article sites, Twitter, any place that you can get your message out where the people who are your ideal client, your ideal customer can hear you, can can see your message and, and, and be attracted to you. So, you know, some of the things that are important here, obviously having a home base, like a blog in order to kind of bring all your content together, getting out on uh, some of the content networks and the social networks like YouTube, uh, maybe Medium uh, right now, or Facebook, Twitter, maybe it's uh, Vine, maybe it's Instagram for you, whatever it is, getting out on those networks and finding ways to put your message out onto those networks and attract followers, attract what we call your tribe to you uh, so you can constantly communicate with those people and, and continue to bring more and more people uh, into that fold. Um, one of the big things that maybe a lot of developers are kind of averse to uh, that I highly recommend is building an email list, building a list of people you can just email. And even though we have all of this social media stuff that's going on and so forth, an email list is still one of the most powerful things that you can do. In fact, uh, I would suggest anybody doing anything uh, online to, to right now go and start building some sort of email list because uh, it, it just, it, it takes everything to a whole new level. All right, stage number five. This is basically nirvana in a sense. This is where you reach the point where you spend your days serving the tribe that you've created. 
Now, there's all kinds of ways that you could choose to do that. You could choose to do that through services. Maybe your tribe is your potential clients and people that you're going to build stuff for. Or maybe it's people that are like you. Maybe it's other developers and you're going to communicate with them and you're going to teach them and you're going to help them. Whatever it is for you, this is where you get to spend your days actually serving that tribe. And so the big focus here is on really connecting with those people, understanding them, and then giving them what it is that they need and what it is that they want and doing it from your perspective in the unique way that you can. In a way, this is about your core value proposition, what it is that you as a person can uniquely give to the world. And so again, you're always focusing on developing that, becoming more and more integrated with your perspective, what your uh, tribe wants and needs and, and developing things that you can give to them that, that fits that perfect combination uh, of all those factors. Right? And, and this is really where you're trying to build your, yourself to the point where you can do this full time um, and this is your career and it's all about just serving your tribe. All right, so those are the five stages of career development. So hopefully that helps you to see kind of where you're at and what your focus should be now to get to the next stage. And then, of course, the, the following stages that you'll need to start thinking about uh, in order to continue to take your career to the next level. And obviously, as you progress through those different stages, uh, the income that you generate as a result continues to rise and rise and rise. So um, it, it, it's a really powerful thing to know what it is that you need to be doing uh, and, and be able to take it to the next level. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you like this video, please subscribe somewhere. Who knows where YouTube put it when you're watching this video, but uh, subscribe so you can get more just like this and you don't miss out on any of these wonderful pearls of wisdom. And also, you know, if, if you like this video, please like it. That's how I know uh, that this is the kind of content uh, that you're after. And then if you have any questions or comments, let me know below in the comments. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.